after the safari. Um, share with you later. Oh, I think I think I think I that's what's like. So you're about to get into some, some key Swahili uh, translation and so, explanation? Yeah. Perfect. If you go to page 23, it's where the key Swahili begins and the, where the translation is. And page 24, 20, page 24, 25, you still have key Swahili words there, which are very useful words like wapi, where, ni wapi, where that you can easily ask somebody where is the toilet? Wapi Cho, Wapi Cho. Wapi Cho. Okay. So you have the first the very first common word is Karibu means welcome. Uh, we have Habari. Hello, Habari. Jambo. How are you? Habari. So the same word is having two meanings. Reply to how are you in Zuri? Uh, what's your name? Jinalako Nani. So, because you're African, tree is a tree, no matter what, no matter where, tree is a tree. You're Africans. The people will ask Jinalako Nani because they want to know who are you. And by name, we normally tell your heritage. Like, to my brother Kamau, the first time I heard Kamau, I knew that there's a person from origin of Kenya. If I say, if, I, if I'm out in, the, in town, somebody asks me what's your name, and I say Malay, easily anybody will know this person is coming from Mbulu Highlands, close to Gorongoro Conservation Area, because it's where the, most of the Iraq, Iraqu people are living. You can say Iraqi, but in my mother tongue, we say Iraq. We have that, which you cannot really get it. Iraq. So, by name, we know what, what tribe you are. That's why lots of people ask, Jina Lako They want to know your name so that they can easily define your tribe. Uh, I was greeting you this morning, Habari Asubui. Habari Asubui means good morning. Habari Yamchana means good afternoon. Habari Jioni means good evening. These are also useful words because to your age here, nobody is younger than 15 years. It's so ten. you can say Habari. Habari. We are using, as you know, Kiswahili has got Arabic words. If somebody comes to you and says, She Kamo. Just looking into your face, you would say, this person should be elder than me. Or if he cannot tell that he is elder than you or younger than you, for him or her to be safe, we'll say Shikamo. So that if you're younger than, than him or her, you will not complain. Or if you're elder, then you're happy that somebody greeted you in a, a respectful way. So if you get Shikamo, do not be upset. For the women, if for the women, if somebody call you mama, do not be upset. It's a very respectful way for us. Mama in, in Tanzania is a woman. She is mama because she carries a woman carries life. So if somebody say mama to you. Be happy because you have got like if nobody say to you mama in our tradition it's like somebody is devaluing you hey. so hello we normally hello you can hear a lot mama hello 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 to you too so you hear a lot of mama for the women she come more for the boys and girls it goes like that um goodbye is there kwaheri um, I'm looking to those very common, useful words. If you don't know something, just say Sijui. Somebody is talking to you in Kiswahili and you don't understand, just say Sijui. That means you don't know. Don't know, don't understand. And they will go to English? 
then they will switch to English. Yeah. They will try. If you say Sijui, then say, oh, okay. What language do you speak? <laughs> Definitely, that person will ask you in in English, what language do you speak? Because you said Sijui. Um, if you say yes, Dio, easy. Hapana, no. So let's look on page 24, Hapana. If you want nobody not to keep pushing on you for something, say, Hapana Sitaki. No, I don't want. It's not a polite form, but once you say it so, nobody will get close to you. Because now they know this person is irritated with what I am trying to tell. So you say, Hapana Sitaki, it's over. If you say Ndio, then you attract more friends. You get more friends who will want to talk to you. The Dio. Dio, yeah. Dio, okay. So, what I was trying to... Okay, the, the, the 24 second, second after activities, you get food. Like, I like Nataka. Nataka beer. I want beer. Then the question is which beer? Kilimanjaro, Safari, Tasca, Hente. We have beers that are brewed here and imported beers. Chakula, if you feel hungry and you get to the restaurant and you want food, just say Chakula. So if you have your book with you, just go here, Chakula. Then the question will be, what do you want to have? If you want to have French fries, say Chipsy. Chipsy. It's an English word. It's, a, it's not Kiswahili. Chips. And then we just... Yeah, <laughs> call it gypsy. gypsy. So um, we are now leaving Arusha town and heading to Arusha National Park, which is a 40 minutes drive away from here. We will uh, maybe a bit slow because of the traffic control. Yeah, we have police as same as numbers of the cars. As many cars we see, that's the number of road uh, police, traffic police. They are almost everywhere and they save lives. Not, not, not a bad thing because here, even if it's a double road, you cannot rush. They will give you a ticket. They have speed guns that they hidden in the vehicles, in everywhere. That's it's, not, it's, it's mobile. Radar it's mobile, so you can never tell where they are. So for <laughs> us, you, it's better you speed, uh, you respect your driving your speed. Uh, leaving Arusha now it's daytime and uh, unfortunately it's cloudy that we cannot see the Meru from here normally we can see from no you just see the small that's not Meru that's a hill that's a small hill <laughs> we don't call it a mountain um, those are those volcanic features along the Mount Meru where we are we are in the slopes of Mount Meru so driving through here you will see the banana trees and the garden like the homes you see that the banana trees we plant banana trees instead of planting flowers for flowers we use small pots you've seen there's a lot of flowers on the side of the road it's because we plant what we get uh, what we get uh, from where we get food banana can be food banana can be money if you have in surplus you can sell it but if you have only that sufficient for your family, that means every morning for breakfast you have one uh, deep fried banana, oil banana, or flexi banana. It depends how you want it to be. So the people plant the banana trees first to get food. That's number one. Number two is for money. Very funny enough, where we are is a tribe called. Warusha. Warusha is a is a mixture of Chaga from Kilimanjaro and Maasai. So it's a crossbreed. It's an intermarriage between the Maasai and the Chagas. We call them Warusha. Everything outside the compound belongs to the man, to the husband. Everything inside the compound belongs to the wife, the woman. The thing is, like the banana tree, the cow milk uh, planted vegetables in the garden 
the wife, the mother, the wife of the family, the mother of, because I'm saying the wife of the family since there are multiple wives. Multiple wife, one, two, three. Depends how rich that man is. So she will be able, she is allowed to cut banana and sell it and make money. But once the thing is outside the compound, the cows are outside the home, the goats and sheep are outside the, the man has full power, and nobody will ask him if he sold it and make money and use it. To the 